Ruger LC9S Pro. Gonna work it out some more with lots and lots of different ammo. I'm out today to do more of a deep dive on this gun. We're gonna run a lot of different ammo through it. I'm gonna try and uh, see if that problem presents itself again. A note which kind of ammo it does. Last time I have two magazines and last time it happened once with each magazine. But I'm gonna start off today with Sig Sauer Elite Performance V-Crown, 124 grain, full house defense ammo. This trigger is pretty incredible. So my objective today it's really not to try and shoot accurately, although I do want to continue to observe the gun's accuracy, but I'm not going to try and test it for that. I did that pretty much in the first hundred, and this thing is extremely accurate. I forgot just how, just how delicate and light that trigger is. And I'll tell you what, with this, uh, with this full house defense load, you do feel it with this little gun. You'd have some snap. Okay, let's try some Spear Gold Dot, 124 grain. Again, jacketed hollow point. Full house defense load. One of my favorites, actually, Spear Gold Dot. Okay, we got through six of those. So here's a deeper dive on the Ruger LC9S Pro, nine millimeter, small self-defense carry pistol, single stack. After having two stoppages during the first hundred, I wanted to get more rounds through this LC9S and see if I could replicate that issue and maybe learn more about it. And I think I did. I'm almost a little embarrassed now that it didn't occur to me right away, <laughs> but the problem seems to be operator error. Yep, that's it. Operator error, that would be yours truly, not the gun. It didn't occur to me at first because I never have this problem with pistols. I really don't, so I didn't expect it. It wasn't even something I was considering. But it would appear that I was causing the slide to lock back prematurely by engaging it with my thumb, <laughs> even though I couldn't feel that happening. So to determine that this was what was happening and to prove it out, I spent more time at the range, shot many different types of ammo through the gun, including some high-velocity self-defense loads, which caused the pistol to recoil a little bit more violently. And sure enough, the hotter the load, the more frequent the problem. Why? Well, the pistol jerks more, my grip slips more, increasing the likelihood that my thumb's going to accidentally bump that slide stop. All right, the other SIG ammo, SIG Sauer Elite Performance, 115 grain ball, full metal jacket. Let's try a couple mags of that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't like SIG ammo. Ruger is deliberately sabotaging SIG Sauer ammunition. Exactly the same situation. The slide is locked fully back as if it were an empty magazine. So this is the second, second malfunction today. I had two during my first 200 for a total of how many? Four so far. Um, I will say this, if you're going to have, this is, this is 
a self-defense gun, right? We all can agree <laughs> that this is being sold and marketed as a personal protection pistol. Um, so malfunctions of any kind are not something that I would be very fond of. If you're going to have a malfunction in a self-defense handgun, and hopefully you've done at least a little bit of training, you've done malfunction drills, that's very important. Um, this is about the nicest malfunction you could have because all you've got to do is that. All right. So your tap rack drill is going to get you right back in the fight. Um, so I guess the only saving grace <laughs> is that it's not a stove pipe, it's not a double feed, it's not something that requires a great deal of, of intervention and manipulation. Um, you don't have to drop the magazine or any of that kind of stuff. You just have to run that slide again real quick. So, small consolation, but that's that. Again, two in a row, two rounds in a row. We're up to three for the day. Okay. And again, this is 115 grain ball ammo. Six hour elite performance. Moving on to uh, some herders select. Sort of one of my go to range rounds. It's relatively inexpensive, can be easily found in bulk quantities, especially at Cabela's. And I found it to be very reliable and uh, very acceptably accurate. So here we go 115 grain herders select. This is the uh, flush round magazine and I don't like this one as much because of the way it hits my pinky especially with a hot round like those defense rounds it can be a little uncomfortable just the bottom of that uh, bottom of that grip just just starts to dig into my knuckles <laughs> which I don't get as much with the uh, Pinky Extension magazine for obvious reasons. Okay, good. Uh, this trigger, as I've said before, is surprisingly good. It's uh, quite amazing, actually. Um, but uh, it's got a long stroke and it's one of those things where until you kind of get a really good feel for it you can you can sort of miss the reset as you've probably seen me do a couple of times so far this morning um, but again that's just a matter of getting accustomed to the gun shooting it enough to where you're just really used to it but uh, it's almost a surprise break every time but it's got a nice smooth pull there's no grit no grit at all in this trigger um, I would say out of the pistols in its class, this is probably the best trigger that I've felt. And it fits beautifully in the DeSantis Nemesis pocket holster. Tool ammo, steel case, this is 115 grain, although this is relatively hot stuff, has been my experience. Uh, yeah, see how we do with some uh, Tula. Okay, so far so good. That was the flush mag. By the way, just to note, it was the, I will refer to these two mags as the flush mag and the pinky mag. It was the pinky mag in the gun when I had my failure, although, again, the first time during the first hundred, I had one failure with each magazine. So, 
Unless we get more data points, no conclusion to be drawn there. This trigger is quite amazing. I do like this trigger a lot. But man, I sure hate, <laughs> I hate reloading these magazines constantly. Okay, more Artula ammo. The sight picture is nice, this gun. These are not night sights, but it's a great three dot setup. Very easy to pick up these sights, um, and they're tight. So they hold you to a pretty nice uh, pinpoint aim spot and uh, just, just a great sight picture. I'll show you that. All right, what's up next? Next we have aluminum cased laser. As long as I'm uh, shooting stuff where I don't have to pick up the brass, let's try that. I do like this Pinky Rest magazine. It's a lot more comfortable to shoot, actually. Okay. All right, so far so good. Um, That was uh, Blazer aluminum cased ammo, 115 grain. Pretty much, uh, I think with the exception of the SIG V Crown and the uh, Spear Gold Dot, everything I'm going to shoot is going to be 115 grain. PMC bronze, 115 grain. Another good range staple ammo. While I'm talking about it, before I forget, um, I just want to comment on the, uh, the ejector on this gun. This thing really flings the brass like 10 feet. <laughs> it puts it in a pretty consistent area, um, but, but it really throws it, like, like I say, about 10 feet away. So um, a lot of small pistols, you know, just kind of lay it next to you. But uh, this one does fling it. So if you like a good, strong ejector, you'll like that. The gun charge is nice. Charges easily. The serrations in the slide are very good. They're cut well. They give you a good grip. They've got just enough forward slant on the angle, but they really allow you to rack that slide um, just, just very easily, very smoothly. So I like that. PMC Bronze. The uh, magazine release is uh, not the best, but that's sort of my experience with Ruger handguns. Their magazine release is uh, spotty. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Trying to drop the slide with the slide stop, slide lock, usually doesn't work too well with a Ruger either. It doesn't work too well with the uh, with the LC9S. So you pretty much have to charge it using the slide. That's the uh, that's the best way. It's probably the way they recommend. I think it's a lot of fun to shoot. When you're shooting uh, a heavy load, you're going to feel a lot of recoil, and that can be a little bit uncomfortable after a while on your hand because it's such a thin pistol. You know, it really focuses all that energy in, into a narrow part of your hand. But aside from that, it's not bad at all. Uh, it's a lot of fun to shoot. It's, it's a very enjoyable trigger. It's a good sight picture. Ergonomically, it feels very comfortable in the hand, and... Uh, I really am enjoying shooting it. Okay, you guys still with me? You getting bored yet? 
Freedom Munitions, 115 grain ball. But before I finish up with this today, I'm going to try some just an opinion hand loads because no good test would be complete without seeing if it'll run my hand loads. Um, I have a lot of faith and confidence in my ammunition that I load because I load thousands and thousands of rounds of it and shoot it all, uh, but mostly in competition. So it's deliberately light. Um, it's made to just make power factor with a little bit of uh, room for error, but uh, by no means is this full power stuff. So um, a lot of times if I'm going to have a cycle problem with a gun or, or something, you know, this, this ammo will, will show that. It'll exacerbate that condition. So let's see how it does with my hand loads. Okay, good. To demonstrate, I went to the range once again, used a revolver style grip of thumbs down, thumb over thumb, or one hand only. Shot over a hundred rounds. The ammo was mostly Herder's Select and Remington UMC, as well as some of my own hand loads. Okay, I've had some, uh, a few issues with the LC9S locking back prematurely slide locking back uh, while there's rounds still in the magazine. Uh, I've only had a few instances of that, but I had it uh, on two different occasions, two different range trips. I want to make sure that I'm not inducing that by riding the slide stop. Uh, something I don't usually do, so it's not something I think about very often, but um, you know, it's a different gun, different configuration, different size. So I'm going to ride thumbs down, thumb over thumb, basically your small revolver grip. And I'm going to put a bunch of rounds through it and see if I can eliminate me <laughs> as a potential for that problem. The semi-auto. Figure if I can get through 100 rounds without a slide lock, then the problem was probably me. Of course, the other thing that works is just going one handed. So, take some one hand shots. I'm through one box of uh, Remington UMC. That's 50 rounds. I'm going to go at least 50 more and again eliminate myself as the error. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. That is a herders. A round of herders. I don't think I have ever seen a stovepipe with a live round. Quite interesting. I haven't had any slide lock issues, but that was new and different. Now, where were we? Hmm. Feeding issue. You see? Sorry, I'm holding it upside down because I want to keep the muzzle down range. But. Okay, I'm into uh, 
some hand loads right now. These are 124 grain, relatively low power, low velocity hand loads I use for IDPA competitions. Just got done shooting an entire IDPA match. These are the few that were left in that box. So. Okay. okay, I'm getting real close to the 100 round mark here. I am back to herders. Herders select. Go two hands. Make sure I don't limp wrist it. We don't want to. We don't want the shooter to cause any errors. I'm just not good at this grip. <laughs> I, I hate a thumbs down grip. Okay, these are the last three of, actually it takes me a little over a hundred. Over a hundred rounds, keeping my thumb away deliberately from the uh, slide stop. And I have not had any cases of the slide locking back while rounds were still in the gun. I did have that one really bizarre <laughs> feeding stove pipe, which is pretty unusual. I am not going to rule out human error, shooter error, my error, uh, for some of those problems I was having early on with this gun, with uh, the slide locking back. So I think what's happening, what's happening is the slide stop being right here, this pistol being small, it is light, it is snappy. You do feel a little more recoil with the uh, LC9S um, than with some other pistols in its size group. But I think with my normal shooting grip, my thumb right here is right, right on that slide stop or close to it. And I think during recoil, every once in a while, without really thinking about it or realizing it, I may have been nudging that slide stop up. So I think, Human error, very likely, was the cause of that. Pistol seems to function perfectly if I keep my thumb well away from that control. Now that said, I am a thumbs forward shooter. This is how I like to grip a pistol. That is how I intuitively will grip a pistol. So if I can't shoot this gun reliably because of my grip, that's a problem between me and this gun. It may not be the right gun for me. Um, but it doesn't mean the gun doesn't work. I had previously complained during the first hundred that the trigger irritated my finger a little bit. Kind of happy to say that in the last two range sessions since then, I have not felt that at all. So could have just been shooter fatigue on that particular day. The LC9S is really a well-made handgun. It's fun to shoot. Good materials, good workmanship. I, I really do like this little pistol, but I do have a few concerns for it as in terms of a self-defense gun or a carry gun. Here's a quick list of what I like and what I don't like. Sort of my grins and gripes about this particular gun. Let's start with the positive, the grins. It's small, very, very small. Easy to conceal, even pocket carry. You can see it fits very easily in my DeSantis Nemesis pocket holster. And also, for those of you who may be familiar with the Nate Squared holsters, you can see its size. Seven round magazine capacity for a gun this size is pretty adequate. It's one more round than Glock gives you with the 43. Um, and again, it's a slim single stack 9mm. So, seven plus one is not too bad. The trigger is very nice on this gun. It's very smooth, very light, very crisp. The ergonomics are good. They're not fantastic, but they are good. It's a comfortable gun to shoot, especially when you're using the magazine with the pinky extension base plate. 
pistol seems to be well made as i've said um it just has the look and feel of a quality firearm so now the gripes the things i don't like as much or the things that i just want to mention for consideration first off the gun may be susceptible to limp wristing malfunctions i've been able to demonstrate that myself and i typically do not have a problem with limp wristing so it could be hard for people who actually are the target market group for this gun may experience a little bit of problem uh, if they don't have a good firm grip or stance when they're shooting it the thumbs forward grip can cause some problems um, i think i have pretty well demonstrated and and determined that some of the stoppages I had were due to that. And you can see where my normal grip puts my thumb, and you can see where that slide stop control is. Well, during recoil, probably more so when the gun's coming back forward, it's very easy for your thumb to accidentally bump that control and lock that slide open. The trigger, which is a good news, bad news kind of thing. Uh, I love the trigger. The trigger feels great. As I said, it's very light, very crisp, but it's also kind of a bad news that it's very light and very crisp because it is a carry gun there is no external safety which is fine with me but you've got a light crisp trigger on a carry gun for a novice or a beginner or someone without a lot of experience um, I would not necessarily recommend that I think this is a gun for someone who's got a lot more experience to carry and before you do carry it, I think you want to put in some time and train with it. Get used to that trigger. Another gripe, actually probably one of my bigger gripes, <laughs> is it only comes with one magazine. One of the other small gripes is that this pistol, even among other pistols in its size range, um, has a little bit more felt recoil than, than some. Um, compared to, say, the Glock 43 and the M&P Shield, which I've been shooting a lot lately um, and, and can easily draw the comparison to, you're gonna, this gun's a little more snappy. Uh, you're going to feel it a little more um, with the recoil than you do those other two guns. Not that big a deal, but if you're recoil-averse, you know, if that's something that bothers you, again, if you're a newer shooter um, and that's something that, that's going to be distracting to you it's something to consider okay so there's a deeper dive second look at the ruger lc 9 s for striker pro a small single stack nine millimeter certainly a contender uh, a viable candidate for your consideration um, with some caveats and some questions maybe still to be answered but I think this is a well-made gun. I think it's a high-quality pistol. And I think it, Ruger has really hit the ball out of the park on some of the points. The trigger is just phenomenal. You know, it's, it's uh, potentially the best out-of-the-box trigger in this class of gun that I've ever felt. LC9S from Ruger definitely belongs on the list of guns you got to look at if you're looking for a small, single-stack, 9mm self-defense carry gun. You'll be seeing more of it.